This segment, let's go ahead and talk about the periodic table. And let's do kind of a broad overview, um, not so much the specifics, but just so that we can start becoming familiar with the information that's contained on the periodic table. So as I'm sure most of us are already familiar, the periodic table has all of the elements that we know of displayed on it, all 116 of them. And so basically it's arranged in periods, if you will. Okay, so the periods basically are the rows across, and then even more important for the way that we use this information, I think, are the way the vertical um, families or the columns, which we call families or groups. Okay, so group one, group two, group three, group four, okay, and all the way across. So that's gonna come up for you numerous, numerous times, okay, that it's, those are the groups or the families. All right, so basically most of the elements are metals and those are shown in blue. And so metals are efficiently, um, con sorry, efficiently conduct heat and electricity. E electricity. They're malleable, which means that they're soft and you can kind of play with them. And they have a shiny appearance. Then we've also got the non-metals in the top right hand side of the periodic table displayed in pink. So those are your guys like oxygen and nitrogen and chlorine um, and the noble gases. And so these guys are, all the metals are solid at normal temperature, but many of the non-metals are liquid at um, normal temperatures. And so that's one of the differences between the two groups. So then we also have this small portion of um, elements which kind of ride the line between metals and non-metals. They're displayed in orange. And so those guys are called metalloids or semi-metals. Okay, so they have properties of both metals and of non-metals. So let's get a little bit more specific here with the periodic table. So again, in the blue are all of the metals, which you can see there are many of them. The orange are the metalloids or the semi-metals. And the pink are the non-metals. Okay, so one thing that probably stands out is that hydrogen is over here in group one, but in fact it is a non-metal. That's because hydrogen just has a bunch of special properties that we'll talk about at a different um, point. So it's kind of neither a metal or a non-metal. Hydrogen is just kind of its own entity, but it is placed here because um, it does lose an electron um, to become H+. So let's, what is contained here is basically if you kind of zeroed in on one of these boxes here, let's pick carbon because carbon is the stuff of life. Um, you would see a few numbers contained therein. So above carbon is the number six. And so that indicates for you that what the atomic number is. And so the atomic number tells you how many protons and how many electrons are contained in an element. So that's why you have the atomic number at the top. Then you also have the information of the molar mass at the bottom. For carbon, it's 12.011. And that tells you how many protons and neutrons there are. Molar mass is usually given in um, the units of grams per mole. Okay, so remember that if you have a different number of neutrons, then that will give you the various different isotopes. So carbon has, there's carbon 12 and carbon 14, different isotopes of carbon because they're a different number of neutrons. Okay, so let's kind of go through pretty quickly what the different groups are. So here we have group one, and group one, those are your alkali metals. Group two are your alkaline earth metals. And then we kind of go over here a little bit, and these guys on the very end, those are your noble gases, super stable. These are your halogens. Um, and then these guys in the middle, collectively, from about here to here, just grouped here are your transition metals. And those guys, just as we'll discuss later on, have really strange properties um, and interact with different elements in different ways. So that's basically the overall gist of the periodic table.